Hello, welcome to the Wireshark and T-Shark tutorial video for the SDN firewall with Pox project. This project is a part of the OMSCS and OMSCY uh, CS 6250 computer networks course. So what is Wireshark and T-Shark? So basically Wireshark is a GUI application. T-Shark is a non-GUI text-based version of Wireshark. But basically, it's a multifaceted network analyzer toolkit. So primarily, uh, the basis use of it is to capture network traffic that will cross through an interface, a network tap, an access point. There's many different things it can uh, cap capture data from. However, for this project, we will just be using the base level feature to capture the simple network traffic that will pass through the local Ethernet port on one of the Mininet hosts that we're using. And we'll be using the T-Shark program. Um, T-Shark works better to capture traffic at Mininet, and then we will take that data from T-Shark and then open it up in the GUI version of Wireshark and actually look at the packets there. However, what we're doing for this project is uh, very, very basic. Wireshark has a lot of features that will make it an important tool for any network engineer or security analyst for their toolkit. You can decrypt traffic, you can find bad actors trying to exploit vulnerabilities, you can capture Bluetooth traffic, capture data going over an industrial control bus, all sorts of different possibilities. So for this program in OMSCS and OMSCY, basically you'll be using Wireshark in a few courses. You're using it for this class, for this project, to help you visualize the different parameters that you'll need to know for building your firewall. If you take the Introduction to Cyber Phys Physical Security class, you'll be using Wireshark to find devices on an industrial control network. And then there are other classes in the cyber program, cybersecurity program that will also use Wireshark. I'm from an OMSCS background, but I have an interest in the OMSCY side of things, but most of my classes have been OMSCS, so I can't give that much feedback on the CY side. So what are the different Wireshark and T-Shark resources? Well, first you have the official project, the Wireshark project www.wireshark.org. It has tutorials, a de description, demonstration videos, and documentation. And inside that documentation area, you'll find the information that you'll need to know to use T-Shark. Pretty much all the information you'll need to know for this project is given to you in the project description, but if you want to learn further on your own, um, take a look at that set of documentation. Now, not for this project, but if you wanted to use something other than Wireshark or T-Shark, there are a few options. On the Linux and Unix world, you have TCP dump, libpcap, basically they're one project. Uh, it basically does the same thing as T-Shark. And then on the Windows side, there's a lot of different tools, but built into every copy of Windows, you have the NETSH command, and basically that will capture packets and we'll save them to a PCAP file, which you can then use something like Wireshark or another network visualization tool to go look at the packets. So this now it's time for a demonstration. Basically, we will be doing a brief packet capture and a simple evaluation of a set of network packets to d demonstrate the different attributes in the frame, IP, and application headers basically layer two, layer three, and up. So you'll, these parameters include things like the MAC address, the IP address, IP protocol, frame type, port numbers, destination, and source port if you're using a TCP or uh, UDP, and then the different ICMP control messages. You'll be able to see all that inside Wireshark. And this is basically a brief demonstration of it. You'll be using a lot of a lot of that data in parts five and six to build your firewall. And basically this demonstration pretty much follows part 4A in your project descri 
project instructions, so feel free to follow along. The first task to do is to start up your VM and open up a terminal window, as you see here on the screen. Then we will be updating the package database. You do that with the sudo space apt space update command. Then you'll see it downloads some files. And then we will be doing the install, the sudo space apt space install space dash y, wireshark, and tshark. And you notice that I'm highlighting some error messages. You've seen these before in EdStim. You can ignore them. That's a package that no longer makes their binaries available on the internet. So let's go ahead and run the update, the install, and it's installing Wireshark, T-Shark. You may actually have a window pop up asking about non-root or root. Just accept the default. Once that's done, we're done. The next thing we're going to look at is we're going to examine the topology and I'm expanding the screen so we can kind of see more of the topology. If you look at the ws-topology.py file, basically that will have the topology that we're using for this project. Uh, this is similar to what you will be ha using on your actual firewall. The difference is it doesn't have an open flow controller built in. So looking at this, we can see different hosts and I'm I'm evaluating the host that we'll be using for this particular demo. We have US1 at IP address 10.0.1.1. With a MAC address, you have uh, CN1. You'll be using that one on the second half of this project. But basically, you can find all your IP address information from this, from this file. And then down here under net, if you look at the, the distributed topology that you're using with the assignment, you'll see that there is the open flow controller line that's missing in this file. So the first step we're going to do now is we're going to actually start up the topology. So basically sudo space python space ws dash topology, that will open up the topology. And then inside the topology, we can just run the dump command. It will give you all the hosts in the topology along with their IP addresses. And you can use that when you do your analysis. So the next step is we will be opening up an Xterm window for each of the hosts that we're using. So the first one will be US1. So we run US1 space Xterm space ampersand and that will open up an Xterm window. And then there's a command I say in the instructions that an export PS1 equals quotation mark US1 and then a angle brace. That helps it uh, that helps you be able to tell which X term window goes to which host. Because after a while, when you're testing this, you'll have several different X term windows open and you need an easy way to tell which, what the different hosts are. And now we're going to repeat the same thing for uh, US2. The host US2, we're saying US2 X term ampersand, and we're doing the same export PS1 command to label the, the X term window as US2. So the next step is to actually call up T Shark. And basically, it's, this will be doing a packet capture of all network packets that traverse into and out of the US, US1 host. And you do that with the US1 space sudo space T Shark space dash W space and a place where to store the pcap file, which will be slash tmp slash capture dot pcap. Basically, sorting as root. Uh, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the US1 Xterm window and we're going to ping US2, which is 10.0.1.2. And you can see the different pings that ping traffic that, that occurred. And then we will then be going to the US2 traffic or US2 Xterm and ping US1, so ping 10.0.1.1, and you'll see some ping traffic there. One of the things to note is on your main terminal window, you will see a 59 at the bottom. That basically is saying that it has captured 59 packets. Now, you haven't sent 59, but it's capturing ARP requests and other things. And we'll see that when we actually do the analysis. So our next task is we will be running a simple test uh, server and test client. So on US1, we're running Python test-server.py. So you can kind of see the syntax of that command. You'll be using this when you test. You have the 
you have the protocol, the server IP, and the port number. Uh, the key thing about the client and the server, the I, the IP address is the same for both. And client, the client, you have the different things. That, but the client will use the IP address of the server. So on host US one, we're going to actually have it run a server, a web server port eighty, by running the Python test server.py space t space ten dot zero point one point one point eighty, run it, and then it's waiting for a connection. And then on US two, we're going to start the client pretty much using the same parameters. And after you run it, you'll see that there is a message. This is the message. It will be repeated, so on and so forth. And basically, you can see on the server side, it's sending it. And then repeat it again just to show how things work. When we're done, we're going to go hit Control C on the US1 host and then exit it out and then exit out of uh, the second host. You'll notice now we have 105 packets captured. So we're going to quit T Shark by hitting Control C and then we can exit out of Mininet with the exit command. So we're pretty much done for packet capture. So the file that we saved was located in the slash tmp slash, well, the file was in the slash tmp directory. It was called capture.pcap. And basically it's owned by root. So we will need to change the ownership to be something other than root. And pretty much we're running as the Mininet user, so we need to go back and change it to Mininet. Uh, Mininet. And then I'm going to be running a command here. This command will not work because I don't have sudo in front of it. So basically, you have to be a super user in order to do it. So you'll run sudo and change own Mininet colon Mininet slash tmp slash capture.pcap. If you don't understand on the change own command, the first is the user, the second is the group. By default, and by default in uh, most distros, the user and the group are the same name. So now we're going to copy the, that capture file to our local directory, just so we can analyze it. Um, and then we're going to start up Wireshark by sudo space Wireshark and, and the ampersand. This is what the GUI of Wireshark will look like. And then we're going to go in this case, I was going off from the temp directory because I had it open before. You can get it from your local directory, but just select that packet capture you, that you had. And then you'll have this uh, screen opened up that shows you the different packets. And you'll see that there are 105 different packets when you go through the entire list. And a lot of these are things that you did not do. They're built in networking traffic. But you can kind of see some of the ones that are highlighted in green and the the green means it's some type of tra traffic. The pink color, I'm colorblind, so if it's not exactly pink, that might explain it. Pink is normally ICMP traffic. So you can kind of see the different traffic in different, different colors. So let's look at this first line on line 14. So line 14 is when we made a ping request from host 10.0.1.1 to 10.0.1.2. So that's going to be the ping when we sent the request. Line 15 is the response back from US2 back to US1. So let's open up the frame and you can kind of see the different frame packets, packet information. Then we'll open up the Ethernet 2 and basically this would give us the destination and the source MAC addresses. And if you go look in the topology, you'll see that these match the addresses that, that were assigned to US1. And then also you can see the IPv4 type, and you'll need to use that when you build your firewall. The next thing is to look at the IP4 packet header. So in this one, we care about the source, the destination, because those are two IP addresses, and the protocol. In this case, this is ICMP, so it's protocol number one. And then finally, we can go look at the ICMP part. We don't need to know this for the project. It's just useful to see. You can see this is a type eight which or type zero, which is an echo ping request. And then we look at packet number 15 and we can see the reply. And you can see it goes from US2 back to US1. And then this cycle repeats a few times in 16, 17, 18, and 19. But as you look through the different headers, you'll see data in the IPv4 information and ICMP information. So let's, line 26, 
is basically an ARP request. So basically, ARP is is the computer basically asking who who is this IP who has this IP address, and it basically says if you do, tell tell it to me. So basically, that's what the ARP request is. It's basically asking the network who has that address, and then you can see that uh, that a response is given back that. 10.0.1.1 is what it's looking for. And then you'll see more router solicitation. Those are IPv6 things. We don't have to deal with it. That's just so you can see it. That's this background network traffic that always happens everywhere. As you get to line 44, you can actually see now the ping request from US2 back to US1. It was the second time we did the ping request. And you can kind of see it's the same type of data we saw earlier. Now we'll scroll down a little bit and go to line number 63. And basically this is our first TCP request. And basically it's source 10.0.1.2. And then the destination was the server, which is 10.0.1.1, which is US1. So here you can see the open, you can, well, let's go through the header first. You have the ethernet header like you had before. You had the IP before header like you did before. But then now you have a TCP header. So in there, you can see the source port, the destination port, the sequence number, all sorts of information there. That the, what the type of packet, this is a SYN packet to synchronize. And you can see the data at the bottom. There's not much useful data in there. So if you look at lines 63, 64, and 65, that constitutes a three-way handshake because you can kind of see the host sending the request, you get an acknowledgement back, and then you get an acknowledgement back the other direction. And then you start su submitting the data. So that's the three-way handshake. Now, as you look into packet number uh, 66, you will notice if you look at the bottom of the screen, you will notice it will say, this is the message, it will be repeated. That's the actual data that's in the packet. So at the bottom, you can actually see the contents of the packet as it's going out. Useful. And then uh, as it keeps going, you can keep going to see more and more of the data. And basically, you'll, you'll, you'll have a back and forth. You'll have it sending data, and then you have it acknowledging back. Uh, and basically, you'll see that all the way until you get to the final fin, which means it's finished. But this is, this is a base TCP packet. UDP is similar, but UDP is connectionless, so there's no three-way handshake. You'll actually be analyzing a UDP packet in the second half of this exercise. And then now we are going on to, we did a second try. When we, when we created the server and client, we ran the client twice. And basically lines 84, 85, 86, Basically, it will be the second time through. Pretty much the data looks about the same. The main difference is the time is different because you ran, we ran that roughly eight seconds after the first one. But basically, when you go through this, look at the different packet parameters. Look at these different things like the destination and source MAC addresses, the source port, destination port, the IP protocol. These will all come in handy when you do your actual firewall implementation because that's basically what your firewall uh, uses.